So in this video, I wanted to briefly talk about what is a clutch pencil and why you may want to use one. So uh, right here we have a very standard pencil. I think everyone probably knows all the qualities about it. We have a mechanical pencil. That's one of those ones that pushes at the top or something like that. It has a skinny piece of lead like this one. It's 0.5 millimeter. An automatic pencil would be type a type of mechanical pencil. That's when the lead would sort of advance itself as you wrote. A clutch pencil is one of these. And this is when you have lead, but the lead is held with a clutch. And it's usually a thicker piece of lead. It doesn't have to be, but it's almost always at least two millimeters. And it goes up to maybe 3.2 or 3.5 millimeters, depending on your brand. And you have a big piece of lead like this. It could be plain, or sometimes it does have printed branding on it. It's like HB, 2B, kind of standard types of leads that you would expect but it is this thick piece of lead. And then this right here, this is called the clutch pencil or the lead holder. It's a very simple tool because it doesn't need to feed the lead or auto advance or anything like that. It just has this clutch piece or collet, whatever you wanna call it, and it will grab the lead and hold on to it. It's really simple and really effective if you want a pencil-like experience, so a, a standard pencil-like experience, but with replaceable lead. And if you push the button, it will open the clutch, but the lead will just fall out. You don't advance it the way you do a mechanical pencil, which I think probably everyone watching this video has seen before. So the clutch pencil gives us a thicker lead, so a lead similar to that of a standard pencil. You lose the ability to advance, but you do get a full length of lead and you do get a lot of width on the lead. So again, you get a standard two or so millimeter, or you can go thicker to that and get something more artistic. So uh, what are the downsides of a clutch pencil? Uh, clearly you can't advance it like this the way you do a mechanical pencil. You need this special lead, which may not be available to you. You also need a special sharpener. A pencil like this will work in any sharpener, like any standard pencil sharpener, but you can't put this piece in there, this lead piece, and you definitely can't put this metal piece in there. So what they do is they sell specialized sharpeners where you could put it in, and it basically is a pencil sharpener, but for this tiny little uh, two millimeter or three millimeter, whatever size. Most of the uh, lead, like the clutch pencil sharpeners, will work with all sizes. The most famous of them is, or most popular, is made by uh, Mitsubishi or Uniball, and it matches this pencil. This is a very popular mechanical pencil, or clutch pencil, rather. It's called the MH500, and you can buy these for maybe, uh, maybe like $7 or $8 on Amazon and other places. They're very easy to find. So what are the advantages of a clutch pencil? Uh, it's a very simple mechanism, so they don't tend to break. They're affordable, again, but pencils are affordable too. So why should you use a clutch? The main thing is that you get a pencil-like experience with a full piece of lead that can be shaped and sharpened, but the length of the device you're using will never change. If you get used to your pencil and you start sharpening it, this pencil obviously is going to get shorter and shorter over time. Maybe you like it really short, maybe you like it really long. Uh, it's pretty rare that you like it variable, right? Uh, you know, you're just gonna lose accuracy and lose comfort as it gets too long or too short. There's a middle ground where everyone likes the pencil length. And that's usually about the size of a mechanical pencil or of a nicer pen. That's so that middle ground is ideal for most people, but any pencil will usually start off too long and end up too short if you stick with it. The clutch pencil will always be the same length. It's just the lead inside that changes. I would say that's the single biggest advantage of them. Then, because you're moving away from a wood body to a plastic or metal body, there is some variability in the device itself. In this case, we have some features not available in a wooden pencil. We have a metal grip up front with knurling. We have a plastic body 
which is done really to save costs, but it also adds, it reduces the weight at the top and increases the relative weight at the bottom, which is good for accuracy for most people. Not everyone likes it, some people prefer a consistent weight across, but things being bottom heavy tend to help. Most mechanical, uh, sorry, most clutch pencils will not include an eraser. Uh, it's, they're usually, usually more for artistic purposes, so erasing isn't as popular, or you might have a standalone eraser. So uh, don't be disappointed if there's no eraser. Usually it's just a raw open piece like that, where you can put the lead in, or uh, just replace the button, something like that. And then again, they don't feed. It's just a clutch, the clutch holds the lead. When you push the button, it just falls out. So you have to get used to that. You're not clicking to advance. Clutch pencils have some cool designs to them. And there are the sort of the lead holder design has been around forever, something like a hundred years now. So if you start looking back through the history of them, you'll find some very cool ones. This is an old Faber-Castell. Uh, I don't think there's any real value to it, but it just uses a cool old school design, has that sort of plastic from the 60s or 70s that's just so different and uh, so much tougher than the plastic of today. It feels like it's uh, made of like a Bakelite or ceramic or something, not just today's kind of flimsy plastics. Uh, and you could find these online for very cheap, like all day long. They're not in any way rare. Some are rare, but uh, they're not particularly rare. All of them aren't rare, I guess I should say. And this one has a similar design, basically a clutch piece of lead. This is probably the original piece of lead that came with this thing from the 60s or 70s. No eraser. This comes off, you can just see the, uh, the open shaft like before. And that's really all there is to it. It's pretty worn down, but it still does its job nicely. Some of them are rarer and some people definitely do collect lead holders or clutch pencils, whatever you want to call them. This is an old uh, Criterium. It's not particularly expensive or particularly rare, but this is one that I'm very taken with the design of. It's all aluminum body, cool clip. And uh, I don't even know what it says there. The name of this is called the Criterium. You could probably just make that out. Uh, it's a two millimeter Criterium. And it says, looks like it says Conti there, but I'm not really sure. This is a French brand. So if you're looking for it, it is a French brand. I believe they're owned by Bic now, uh, but they're pretty cool. And you can see that the knurling is, it just cut out of the aluminum. Sometimes I say like knurling feels a little sharp, uh, but it's never actually like sharp, like it's gonna cut you. This, this one is actually sharp. And uh, I don't think it'll make you bleed, but it definitely has some really rough edges to it. So it's uh, maybe not the most comfortable, like you can't even adjust your fingers on it because it's so sharp, but it definitely, for me, it's like very cool and sort of industrial age. The last thing I'll say is that some clutch pencils, if they have enough interior width, they can be used to grab a D1 pencil refill. So that's one of these guys and sorry, D1 pen refill. This is a Schmidt D1 refill it's called the, uh, I guess it's called the 635, it's just a ballpoint refill. These are typically found in, uh, in multi-pens. And what you could do is you will just pop out the lead, put in this piece, and in this case it doesn't fit. So let's try another, let's try that Faber-Castell. Doesn't fit. Now let's try the Criterium. And no, it doesn't fit either. But in some of them, it will fit. I definitely had it in one of these. Let me retry that. There you go. So now we have a clutch pencil holding a D1 refill. Uh, you're gonna wanna shop around and see which pencil is the best or which lead holder is the best for holding your D1 refill, but in this case, you could see it definitely works nicely. I don't know that it's something you're gonna to wanna to do, but it's nice to have the option of using your lead holder as a pen, just a, a cool change of pace. And you could reduce, there you go, that looks a little bit better. Again, some will be better 
than others at this, but it's a useful little hack. So I think that is probably a good introduction to clutch pencils or lead holders, whatever you want to call them. And if you have any questions or comments or anything I missed, please do let me know. Thanks for watching.